everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're back if you are new welcome to my channel i'm shana and i have another true crime case for you today this is all information that i have found online that i've compiled into a video for educational and entertainment purposes if you've watched any of my other videos you can now see i have a different background and i have been finding it extremely difficult to establish a good location with the light and the noise outside and i'm hot and I'm just trying to get this video created because it's a very interesting story that I wanted to bring to you all. So please forgive the little mishaps along the way, but I think you'll enjoy this story. So sit back, relax. This is a little bit of a long one. So get comfortable and let's get started. Zachary Bone was born in 1978 to Lori and Jack, and he had an older brother named Jed as well. His relationship with his parents was pretty good. His mother, Lori, was the more strict parent, and his dad, Jack, was the more laid back, easygoing kind of parent. And Lori and Jack had very free spirits. So they actually decided to uproot their lives and travel cross country and just see where the world see what the world looked like, see where life took them, and they ended up in Seattle, Washington. And they absolutely fell in love with Seattle. They wound up settling down there, and um, they had their two boys there with them. After they got there, things didn't go quite as planned for their marriage because Lori ended up divorcing Jack. His party lifestyle and his drinking and his bad habits wound up just becoming too much for Lori to want to deal with. And she ended up divorcing him and actually moved to California with the two boys and left Jack back in Seattle. So growing up, Zach was very popular and outgoing. He was the goofball. He was the kid in class that everybody knew, everyone thought was so funny. And he was tall. He was very tall and just, just a goofy kid. But he had a really good reputation in the school and people really liked him. He was a kid that was, he wasn't a troublemaker. He wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but he was just a fun kind of outgoing guy in school. And when he turned 18, he actually told his mom he was thinking about moving back with his dad in Seattle. And his mom was not thrilled about this because Jack was, like I said, a partier. He was into drinking. And Lori was just worried that basically Zach and Jack were going to drink and party away their lives together. And she was not with that. But since he was 18, she didn't have a choice but to let him go. So he did plan to move back to Seattle with his dad, Jack. Prior to doing this, though, he wanted to explore a little bit so he decided to take this long road trip and he explored the united states he wanted to see everything that this world had to offer him so he stopped in multiple cities and actually wound up in new orleans where he fell in love with this city he was not willing to leave new orleans once he got there and he said you know what i'm gonna get an apartment so that's exactly what he did he got an apartment he started bartending there. And mind you, he's only 18 years old, but he's living his best life um, just bartending, drinking. And I don't know how because he's under 21, but he's so tall. He's six foot 10. So everyone thinks he's probably an adult. He looks older. And according to the ladies, he is physically attractive. Now, I will let you be the judge of that. I am a neutral party here. But according to everyone, he was very attractive and the women were crazy about him. So they loved this bartender, Zach. Zach loved his life in New Orleans. He fell in love with the city. And he actually came across a woman named Lana. Now, Lana was some years older than Zach. She was 28 years old and he was 18 when they met. Lana actually was an exotic dancer. So she traveled, kind of, she traveled the country actually dancing in different locations. And that's how he met her. And when he saw her, he just, he couldn't take his eyes off of her. He was buying her drinks and they kept in communication after Lana left to go back home. And he basically was writing her saying, you got to come back. I miss you. Come be with me. And in the span of three weeks, y'all, three whole weeks, Lana decided, you know what? I'm going to go back. I need to see this guy. I miss him. So she packs her stuff, she gets up and she goes back to New Orleans from wherever her hometown is. And she and Zach spend some more time together. It's just as good as the first go round. They are having a blast together. And Lana decides this is it. I'm moving down here. And Zach is all for it. The two of them are just two peas in a crazy pod and they are happy. So 
she moves in with Zach and she actually finds out that she's pregnant. And around the same time that she finds out she's pregnant, y'all, this 28-year-old woman finds out that the man who has impregnated her, that's not a nice word at all, impregnated her is 18 years of age and she is not with that. She is not happy to hear that he is only 18. You would think that one of the first things people will talk about in a relationship is, you know, what's your name? What do you do for a living? How old are you? But that didn't happen. And I'm not one to judge. He probably looked older because of his height. He was a bartender. So she probably assumed that he was at least 21 years old, but he was not. And when this pregnant 28 year old Lana found out that Zach was only 18, she was like, I'm not willing to continue a relationship with him. In her mind, he was basically a child. So she called off the relationship, but she was still pregnant. And, you know, she actually didn't tell Zach that she was pregnant in the beginning. She waited a good few months until she, I guess, was ready to tell him. And she gave Zach the option. She proposed it as an option. Like, look, I'm pregnant, but I understand you're probably not in a place in your life where you're ready to be a father. I'm going to keep the baby. If you want to be around, you can. If not, that's fine, too. Zach said, what? absolutely not I'm not gonna not be around for my child of course I want to be in this child's life Zach was thrilled he's 18 years old but he is absolutely just thrilled to be a father to Lana's child he's so excited and he's like what do you mean why would I not want to not much longer later Lana has the baby and since she had broken up with him and they actually weren't in a relationship Zach didn't know she went into labor when she did he actually found out about three weeks after Lana had the baby from a mutual friend. That must suck to find out that your baby was born three weeks ago from someone who's not the mother of the child. But that is how he found out. And he rushed to Lana's bedside. He rushed to see the baby. It was a little baby boy that Lana had named Jackson. And Zach just fell in love with this child, y'all. He was so just enamored by this baby. He was like, this is amazing. I can't wait to be a dad. It's actually really cute when you think about it because he was young. He was only 18 years old, but he was just so thrilled. Lana was very distant with Zach, you know, when he came around and started to spend time with Jackson. She wasn't really into the idea of sparking anything up with him at that time. But I guess over months of seeing Zach with the baby, she kind of revisited the idea in her mind. She was like, you know what, maybe this could work. Maybe we could be a family and she decided to give Zach a second chance despite the age difference and at this time he's 19 years old and Zach like I said thrilled about everything in life he is just so happy that Lana is willing to give him a second chance he's looking forward to proving to her that he can be the man she needs that he can be the father that Jackson needs he picks up a second job another bartending job so he's really going hard in, the, in a good way <laughs> on behalf of his family he's very just like into it just think of someone who's excited about everything that was him and he just said it in his mind his goal was to provide and to prove to Lana that he was worthy and that he was going to be the best partner and the best father so some time goes by and Lana and Zach are just living their best lives together in New Orleans Zach actually decides that he wants to propose so he proposes to Lana and they get engaged around this exact same time y'all she finds out she's pregnant again and this time is with a baby girl named Lily and just like the first go round, Zach is thrilled he's excited to be a father he is just loving the I don't know I guess the act of providing for his family and he went to his bartending jobs and his free time all he did was spend it with Lana and the kids so he was just trying to do the best that he could and he actually decided at a time that the bartending wasn't enough it wasn't quite cutting it so remember how I told you guys that Lana was an exotic dancer when she was not probably eight nine months pregnant she was still dancing after she had Lily so he was like, you know what? I don't want her to have to work. I want her to be able to stay home with the kids. So he goes out and he's thinking that he's trying to come up with an idea, maybe what he can do career-wise, you know, get serious about something else aside from bartending. He calls up his older brother, who's actually already in the military, and he gets in his mind the idea of joining the army. When he 
finds this idea he absolutely runs with it and he decides this is it for him he is going to enlist in the army and he's going to be able to really provide for his family in the way that he wants to so in order for him to go into the military he obviously he didn't graduate from high school so he had to get his ged he did that and he enlisted and lana was so proud of him because she knew that he was really doing this as a selfless act to care for her and the two kids and he hit the ground running in the military you know he was stationed in germany and lana was back home so it was definitely hard for him to be away from her and the kids but he knew that he was doing it for good reason and he knew you know that they would be together again one day but for the most part he loved the army he enjoyed the camaraderie and the honor that came with serving his country and everything seemed to be going going well so far at one point zach has to get foot he has to get what he has to get foot surgery and he flies back home to new orleans to do that and when he goes back after he's recovered from his surgery goes back to germany on base lana and the two kids are able to come with them so he was just thrilled he has his family lana's happy because they're on base everything was cool now he's stationed in germany but he does get deported to iraq and while he's in iraq he finds out that lana falls sick she falls down bad with hepatitis C and she declines very quickly. And Zach obviously goes back to be with her, to care for her, but the military only gives him two weeks that he can actually spend and care for his wife. He had letters written by doctors, by her doctors to the military. He had you know, people from the Red Cross reaching out to the military on his family's behalf, just trying to say, you know, Lana needs care and Zach needs to be with her, but the military basically gave him orders to report back and after two weeks he did go back. But this really changed his perspective of the military. So this guy who's kind of excited about everything in his life suddenly finds that the thing that he thought he really wanted to do and that he was really happy with isn't what he expected and it really left a bad taste in his mouth. So that along with other things that he had seen in iraq he was definitely experienced some pt experiencing some ptsd from the things that he had seen and, and had experienced while he was overseas so when he gets back to germany after leaving lana i'm sorry when he gets back to iraq after leaving lana he's not putting his best foot forward anymore he's there but he's not really there if you know what i mean he actually decides that he's gonna find a way out so he basically starts failing his PT tests, not by accident, not by chance, not because he couldn't keep himself in shape, but on purpose. He decides that he has no choice but to find a way out and his way of doing that is going to be to purposely fail his PT tests. Over time, he actually does get discharged from the army. I don't know exactly what it's called. It's not a dishonorable discharge. It's not an honorable discharge, but it's not a dishonorable discharge either. However, even though he wasn't technically dishonorably discharged, basically all the benefits of the military were snatched away from him. So he may as well have been dishonorably discharged. He had no educational benefits after he left. He had no health benefits after he left. And when he leaves, you know, he goes back, he shows up on the doorstep and Lana's like, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing here? Don't you have somewhere to be on tour somewhere? And he's like, no, I got discharged. And she is absolutely not okay with this in lana's mind you know she was able to stop working and she was able to stop dancing and she was able to become a stay-at-home mom her children had health care she had health care all because of his military career and she felt like he just threw it away so upon the news that zach is no longer in the army lana is like okay well i guess i gotta go start working again so she you know gets up and she goes back to new orleans and she leaves zach and the two kids in germany so that she can start to look for a job and she goes back and she starts dancing again um and in the midst of looking for a new job she also finds a new man and while zach and the kids are still overseas she ends up in a new relationship and then by the time zach gets back she's like look this isn't this isn't gonna work for me i want a divorce she actually had a place already in New Orleans. And when Zach got back, he basically had to get a hotel room because she was already established since she had left him at first to come over. 
so Zach is very disappointed. You know, he's hurt, of course. He's heartbroken. He didn't expect things to go this way. He thought that he'd be able to come back to New Orleans and they could go back to their fast-paced party life that they had before he was in the military, but that did not pan out the way that he wanted it to. So when he's in this hotel room, you know, he is like, okay, well, I gotta pick myself back up somehow. So he starts bartending again. He goes back to doing what he knows he's good at. And again, the ladies are crazy about him. The ladies are crazy about Zach and the guys are crazy about Zach too. He had everybody on his coattails because he was this tall, apparently handsome, lively, excited about life guy. And everyone was like, Zach is the man. So pretty much he had his pick of the litter. So anybody that saw Zach usually wanted him is basically the way people explain it. So a lot of people wanted to date Zach, but there was this one girl, you know, as some time went on and he was working and he was out there again, there was this one girl that he really liked that he really wanted and she didn't give him any time of day. Now this girl's name was Addie and she was a firecracker. She was a very fiery, very opinionated, some explain her to be violent, angry, rough, a drunk, but none of this deterred Zach. He loved him some Addie, and you know, for a long time, he was he was right at her. He was pursuing her. He was the how you doing her as she walked by, and she wasn't paying him any mind for a long time. But finally, she just gives in. She's like, you know what? Let me just talk to this man. And one night, they're talking over some shots of Jaeger. Apparently, I don't even know what Jaeger is, but they're drinking at the bar. And Addie tells Zach, you know, her life story and he just falls for her and he's like so enamored by her. And Addie is, you know, she's kind of, she has a hard exterior, but she, re she realizes that she really likes Zach. So now she believes the hype. She's like, okay, I see why everybody was on him before. And they start their romance. So things started off pretty good. But given the fact that Addie was a drunk and given the fact that Addie had a very sharp tongue and she wanted to fight when she was mad things didn't stay good for long so they were in one of those relationships you know those relationships where people just together but they fight it's like the most toxic relationship but you know they will never leave each other that's what their relationship was like i know everybody knows some relationship that's just like that that's exactly what they were like it also didn't help that Addie also did drugs so she drank to excess but she also did coke so that I'm sure did not help matters uh, very much. Addie is a bartender at the same place that Zach works at. So they have this perfect setup. They end up moving in together. Addie works the day shift at the, at the wherever the bar and Zach works the night shift. And you know, he is just happy. She's happy, things are good. And they are on the French Quarter just out there just living their lives. Now, I know we all remember Hurricane Katrina. This is 2005. So just a reminder of how recent this case is. This isn't one that's from a long time ago. 2005, Hurricane Katrina hits New Orleans and it's pretty devastating. Literally, New Orleans was underwater. And you know they, you know how when a hurricane's coming, the broadcasters are telling everyone to evacuate. evacuate. First responders will not be coming out after a certain time. Like you gotta go, you gotta get on up out of here. Guess what Zach and Addie did? They didn't go anywhere. They decided to stay. And they said, you know, we're going to weather the storm. We're not going anywhere. We're going to survive. We have each other. That's all we need. So the two of them, like two stupid peas in a pod, decided to stay put, um, you know, where they lived. And Lana, before the storm hit, is calling him like, are you going to come like to safety? Because you have two kids that need you. So... I don't really care if you die, but I'm sure they would. And he's like, no, I can't leave Addie. So Lana's like, okay, well, I don't really want to meet her, but if you, I would rather you be alive for your kids. So just bring Addie with you. Come on, like, let's go. And Zach says, no, I'm staying. This is it. This is my home. I am not leaving. So the two of them stay. They weather the storm, literally. They survive. And by this point, New Orleans is like basically underwater. Aside from not having electricity, they had a largely regular like life. I mean, as regular as you can have without electricity. They were kind of like, I guess you could say the entertainers of the town. So the people who were still lingering around after the hurricane hit, 
they would drink with them they would tell stories with them they would make them food from cans and you know they was basically just they was they were them folks down in new orleans post katrina and they were just living off the land and they loved this kind of survivalist life that they had most people would be like uh no electricity no thank you but the two of them loved it so over time things do go back to normal as they do uh, after King, after Hurricane Katrina, and when the town started to kind of open back up, when the city started to open back up and kind of rebuild itself, Zach and Addie got their jobs back, and they started working again. They were actually kind of bummed about it because they loved this living off the fat of the land life that they had that much. But nevertheless, life went back to normal, and they started working again. So pre-Katrina, Zach had been kind of getting visiting time with the two kids on the weekends every other weekend type deal and after the hurricane Lana didn't know if Zach was even alive so she winds up just driving down there to see what happened she's assuming that he is dead because she hasn't heard from him the the hurricane killed you know it destroyed it was a really like it was crazy the hurricane for someone to the thought of even someone surviving through that so she was just sure that he was dead right she gets down there she shows up to his house he is in there with Addie, and they are very much alive and lana is pissed because this man has not come back around for his kids he hasn't attempted to find his kids after the hurricane he is just down there living no no electricity all that time and now you know he's going back to normal but he hasn't made any attempt to, to reconnect with his children. So Lana shows up with a baseball bat. And Lana's outside the door. She's ready to get buck wild outside this woman, this woman and this man's door. And guess where Addie's at? She must not have had no liquor that day because she was inside of the house looking through the peephole at Lana, acting a fool outside. And um, Lana was basically like, get your behind out here, Zach. You have two children that I need child support for and that you need to spend some time with. She was basically just really fed up with Zach and she couldn't believe that after the hurricane passed, he wouldn't try to reconnect with his children. But Zach basically explained to, not, to Lana, like, look, I do want to have a relationship with them. You know, I love my children. Let me back in. And Lana was like, okay, well, you know, you kind of have to prove that you're going to be consistent and that you're going to be a reliable father before i'll just let you waltz back into their lives but over time she did allow him to and when this happened Addie was like she seemed like she was going to be a good stepmom right zach felt like Addie was supportive she made him feel like she wanted to be a part of the kids lives she made him feel like she really wanted to be involved and present and that she had no problem with the kids visiting and being over and everything but when it actually came time to do the thing it proved that she was not being real about what she was saying to zach so kids come over addie's out addie is out like the whole weekend like leave saturday morning come back monday morning type deal or Zach tells her that the kids are coming and Addie's like, no, they're not. You better go get a hotel room because those kids aren't coming here to my house. So while Addie kind of like made Zach feel like she was going to be this very loving and supportive kind of stepmom figure for the kids, she absolutely was not. And, you know, that definitely caused arguments in the relationship. But since Addie was so volatile and, you know, Zach was just like this free-spirited, happy-go-lucky guy, they always butt heads anyway. They had a very, like I said, toxic relationship. So the mixture of the drugs and the alcohol and them two being so different of people just pushed Zach to the point where he was fed up. They got into this big argument. Addie said some really hurtful things. And Zach is like, you know what? I got to, I got to get on up out of here. So Zach actually moves back with his family somewhere. I don't know where, but he moves away for a couple weeks and then about two weeks go by and he's like, ah, I miss Addie. So I'm gonna go back. So he gets up and he goes back. Not only Addie, he also missed his children because his children, remember, are, um, you know, living nearby at this time too. Lana moved had, had moved back to New Orleans after the hurricane. So he moves on back he's around his kids he's around Addie, and things are okay for a little while but zach was just really kind of turned off by Addie and all of her antics and you know he bartended and she bartended so they knew a lot of the same people but he found a couple clubs where you know he kind of get away with some stuff he could kind of be himself Addie didn't know the people there she didn't ever go there 
and he wound up actually coming across a guy that he wound up falling for he got into a relationship with this man and Addie had no idea for a long time a well, long enough but Zach was out on the town with this man they were you know they were in a whole relationship they had pictures together they showed PDA together it wasn't a secret all of Zach's family and friends knew except Addie didn't know and when Addie found out Things went downhill real fast. She said some very hurtful things. She called him every name in the book that you can imagine. She stole his phone. She called his friends and his family and said, look, he's gay. She just she just really went above and beyond to hurt him after she found out that he was seeing a man. And she wound up breaking up with him. Surprise, surprise, Addie does not stay away for long. No, no, nay, nay. She comes on back and she's like, you know what, Zach? I'm experiencing some financial hardships, so can we revisit this little arrangement? And Zach, for some reason, is like, yeah, that's a great idea. So the two of them end up moving back. Well, they actually decide to move in together, and they decide on this apartment. And about two days after they decide on the apartment, and Zach gets the money together, because mind you, Addie don't have any money. Addie goes down to the, the leasing office or whatever their landlord has. And she says, you know what? Just put my name on this uh, on this here lease here. Just put my name on it. The guy I thought I was going to move in here with, he's trash. He was cheating on me. I don't want anything to do with him. He's not welcome here. Put my name on that lease. So what does the landlord do? Landlord's like, okay. Landlord puts Addie's name on the lease and that's it. Zach is not on this lease and Addie signs it. But mind you, all of the money, like I said, that went for the down payment first and last month's rent was the money of Zach. So when he finds out that Eddie has done this, he is pissed. He's livid. He can't believe it. I'm sure he can believe it, actually. But he's mad. So they get into a huge argument, I'm sure, as you can imagine, probably just as bad as the other ones times 20. And he's basically like, you're not going to force me out of here. Like... You are not going to force me out of here. I don't care if my name is on this lease. My money is on this lease, so I'm not going anywhere. The next morning after they have this big altercation, Zach is with one of his friends. And his friend is like, you all right, buddy? You looking a little rough today. You okay? And Zach is like, you know what? Me and Eddie had a big fight last night. She stole my money and ran off on me. It was just a really long night. She was going through one of her episodes. And the friend is like, he knows Addie's antics in her history, so he doesn't think that this is abnormal. He actually just says, oh, man, all right, well, hope it gets better. He thinks that Zach just looks horrible because he really was up all night fighting with Addie. About two weeks later, on October 17th of 2006, Zach walks into a rooftop bar on the seventh floor of a hotel in New Orleans, and he orders some drinks. He opens up a tab and he starts drinking. He's there drinking and smoking for about three hours go by. And he starts wandering around the rooftop bar. So the, the, the bartender is actually thinking he's about to run off on his tab. So the bartender is keeping an eye on him like, you're not about to run off on me. And you better run me my tip too. That's what the bartender was thinking. But Zach, nope, he gets up. He has his drink in his hand. He walks over like to the edge of the building on the seventh floor. He downs the rest of his drink real fast. And he jumps over the ledge. He jumped over the ledge and he landed five stories down on the top of a parking garage face up. He died on impact. So when police find him or, you know, they go to recover him, they find some things in his front pocket. They find his military dog tags. They find his phone. They find the regular stuff. And they also find a note. The note reads, this is not accidental. I had to take my own life to pay for the one that I took. If you send a patrol to 826 North Rambert, you will find the dismembered corpse of my girlfriend, Addie, in the oven, on the stove, and in the fridge, along with full documentation on the both of us and a full signed confession from myself. So of course, police, first thing they do is go right over to that address that he had listed on the note and they find they find some things, y'all. So there was words all over the apartment walls, like he had written, I love my wife, go tell my wife, like talking about Lana. It's freezing in the apartment. Like the thermostat was set to the lowest possible AC setting. So it was freezing in there. They see a huge arrow above the stove on the wall pointing down. 
to the oven and stove area. Inside of the refrigerator was her torso and it's inside of a black trash bag. Inside of the oven were her leg bones and a roasting pan. And on top of the stove, her head was in one pot, which sounds just like the, the, gold, the Joel Guy Jr. case where he boiled his mother's head. Addie's head was in the pot and her hands and feet were in another pot on the back burner of the same stove. And they had been simmering, they had been cooking to the point that the police said like the skin and her flesh had started to fall off the bone. That's how much, how long her flesh had been boiling for. He also had a five page confession inside of the apartment explaining what happened. He said that the night that they got into an argument, he calmly, calmly strangled Addie. He laid her on the bed. He sexually assaulted her multiple times. And then after this, he went to sleep right next to her, right next to Addie's body in the bed. He went to sleep and he went about four days as normal. He spent time with his friends. His friends said that everything was fine. He was acting normal. He was acting actually very happy. You know, the, the happy-go-lucky Zach that everybody knew. And... He says that in these four days, he's trying to decide what to do with Addie's body. He doesn't know what exactly he wants to do. Finally, he decides and he comes home again after four days of leaving and coming home and looking at the dead body of his girlfriend. He comes home, he drags her body into the bathroom. He puts her in the bathtub and he dismembers her there. He then moves her body parts to the kitchen and he cleans this bathroom so immaculately, like you wouldn't have even been able to tell that anyone had washed their hands in there. That's how just spotless this bathroom was. For considering how much blood must have been present after a dismemberment of a body. But apparently he had some really good cleaning skills. And uh, you know, he, he did a really good job cleaning and he then put her body parts in the kitchen he said that he decided to boil her head and her hands and feet because he thought that, that would be easier, an easier way of kind of like making the flesh deteriorate to get rid of it. I don't know. The way it sounds to me is that he had more plans after this because what reason would he want to preserve the body? He turned the thermostat down to like really low to almost the, the temperature of a refrigerator. So he was trying to preserve her body, but then he put her hands and her feet and her head on the stove and boiled it. What exactly was that going to do if her torso was in the refrigerator being preserved? I don't know. It kind of just seems like maybe he had more plans and he went like halfway through with it and then just couldn't live with what he had done. So he just ended it off. That's what I think. The day that, remember I said his friend said that he looked horrible? That day he actually was thinking about what he had done the night before. And what he had done the night before was kill Addie. So his friend didn't think anything of the story that Zachary had told him because of the past that the, the two of them had together. But the reality is that he looked like crap because he literally committed murder the night before. The story spread very quickly in the media, which of course affected the family of Zach, Lana and the two kids, but they, as far as I know, are okay. If you know any information about where they are currently, please put it down below because I would like to know. But that is the extent of the story. Really tragic. Like he killed his girlfriend in a rage and then killed himself because he couldn't live with what he had done. Lana actually said that she was happy that he ended it because she didn't want to have to live with explaining to her kids what her father had, what their father had done and like with him being alive and everything, which is interesting that she said that. Like she was glad that he ended it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine like being his family or Lana or their kids like can you imagine growing up and knowing that your father had done something like this it's absolutely just crazy but that is the story y'all i don't know what it is about these very gruesome cases but it's extremely interesting to me like what can snap in a person's brain to make them do something like that like the joel guy jr case that case haunted me for some time after i talked about it i would i would actually just replay in my mind like the police footage and thinking about what he had actually done it's quite disturbing like truly i'm sure all of you feel the same way but yeah that's it that's that's that that's that that's that with that
So if you made it this far, you are loyal. You really are. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.